sometimes the idea of ship modularity creates some unusual and interesting variants, and this ship is no exception. But who is it for, and who would buy one? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the currently flyable MISC Reliant Marco. The Marco is a reporting ship, envisaged to follow other players around whilst they do interesting things. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you know what to expect. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the three quarters of people still watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1. Ship Tour And in order to get access to your Reliant, you open a deployable cargo ramp at the rear. This takes you up into the rear section of the ship. On the left or port side are two beds, and they do have closing doors when in use, and on the right side is an operator station. Moving further forward, there is a server rack, and back on the port side there is a small bathroom area. Coming to the front of the ship, into the cockpit itself, there's a pilot and co-pilot chair. The co-pilot operates the remote turret. When in rotated mode, there's a door behind the pilot which closes, which blocks access to the front of the ship. It's also worth adding that in order to leave the pilot seat, including when you're in space, it's necessary to drop the landing gear. And finally, that crew station in the back has a lot of screens, which hopefully in future patches may become more useful. Part 2 combat performance. So the stock Reliant Marco comes armed with two fixed size 2 weapons and four size 2 missiles. That's a fairly limited armament, more suitable for fighting very small ships. But that stock setup is without the wingtips armed. By grabbing an alternative combat mount from Area 18, you can add either two gimbaled size 3 weapons or four additional size 2 weapons. That's a substantial firepower increase, and if you did plan to run your Marco in combat, ought to be a key consideration. That said, it's worth pointing out that this variant isn't designed as a combat ship per se. Defensively, the Marco carries two size 1 shield generators, which is fairly standard, but feels weak. One of the common loadout changes is switching out the components for stealth components to leverage the low signature of the Marco. Part 3. Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, the Marco sports the same double bubble canopy from others in the Reliant line, which makes for great visibility all round, to the front, sides, above and below. Moreover, the rotating wing means if you like better visibility to your right, go ahead and flip the wing, and suddenly you've got a better field of view. That visibility makes it really easy to land the Marco. The key thing to consider is to get your speed under control before dropping the gear, as the landing gear deployment is what toggles the engine truly into VTOL mode, which significantly reduces your ability to slow down. But with speed in check, landing the Marco feels great. The handling on the Marco is fairly good too. It's not one of the fastest ships, but it's not slow either, and notably acceleration is fantastic. Braking is certainly slower, but holding the space brake helps, and the coolers on the Marco mean you can hold that boost button for quite some time without running into difficulty. And all of that makes for a potentially very stable platform, which fits with the theme for a camera ship. The quantum drive is a little on the slow side. It's not the worst, but it's certainly not the fastest. 
That said, with the limited quantum fuel stores available on the Marco, it's probably one you should keep, just to eke out a reasonable range. One advantage of the stock drive is that the cooldown is almost non-existent, which is great if you're travelling between multiple short hops. Part 4 – Operating Costs The base model Reliant is a starter ship, meaning operating costs are kept to a minimum, and the Reliant Marco also brings that benefit. Across refuel, repair and rearm, you'd be lucky to be paying 100 Alpha UEC. Moreover, the Marco has a few options for making money. It's able to take on low-risk combat contracts, particularly with some component upgrades to boost your firepower. And the physicalised room in the back can be used for box delivery type missions, albeit you'll need to place the boxes quite carefully. In theory, the Marco could also be used for personnel transport, and if you're worried about personal safety, just make sure your passenger is in the rear section, which is locked when the wing is down. By the time you open up that cockpit door, you'll be back in the next safe zone. Part 5 – The Verdict It would be easy to be swayed by that bright yellow paint scheme, but purely focusing on functionality, the Marco doesn't currently bring much to the party. It's a wonderful example of a unique ship with a unique role, but sadly that role is not well utilised in the current version of the game. There are lots of great things about the Reliant Marco though. The dual pilot co-pilot configuration is great for flying with a friend, and may become even more relevant in future patches where the workload can be more evenly shared. There are two beds in the back, making for the option to log out anywhere, which is certainly not common for many ships at this size point. But the big challenges for the Reliant Marco are actually the other Reliant variants. The core is the one that you'd get for more cargo space, or the Tana if you were more combat focused for the extra missile slots, and all for a very similar price point. And that price point for the Reliant Marco is 780,000 Alpha UEC, or $95 when on sale. So my verdict has to be, it's not worth it, because you could buy a more useful Reliant variant if you were so inclined. All of that said, if you regularly play Star Citizen, maybe 780k isn't that much to get something unique, something with character and the Marco has that in spades. But do you agree? What do you think of the Marco? Let me know in the comments, and if you've enjoyed this video, you might press that like button. Otherwise, as ever, thank you for watching.